All right, now let's get a little more insight into developments in Burundi. And we're joined in our studios by Masharia Munene, an international relations expert. Thanks very much for your time today. Now, it's been three weeks of unrest in Burundi and the protests could go on for some time. So far, we've seen a crackdown by authorities. How should the government respond to the crisis? Uh, thank you very much. To start with, uh, President Nkrutziza violated the principles of peace and sense of justice. So what he needs to do and his government is to reassure the people of Burundi that he is willing to return to the principles of peace and justice so that he can restore confidence in the state and in the state machinery. Right now the impression that he has given is that uh, he does not respect no. peace or he does not uh, he cannot be trusted with this thing, and it's a very bad impression to create that he cannot be trusted. So he needs to go back to the principles of peace uh, and assure people that that will be the case. And also, in, in recent weeks, we've seen um, a failed coup attempt. Does President Nkurunziza have more leeway now to consolidate power and clamp down on dissent? Well, that coup was very strange in itself, given that the supposed leader had no command of any security organ at the time, having been fired uh, before. But it's an excuse that can be used to clamp down on critics. We hope that he does not, he has said that he will not take any revenge, so we hope he lives up to that. But adopt a more reconciliatory way, uh, posture, so that uh, violence does not escalate. Because if it uh, escalates, there is a danger of the country becoming fragmented, and he is likely to be blamed for it. Now, Mr. Monena, there are so many concerns around developments in Burundi, ranging from violence to the number of refugees that are fleeing the country. There's, of course, been some disquiet after pictures emerged of President Nkurunziza playing a game of football. And this is as tensions continue in that country. Is that a proper image for a leader to project in a country in, in this state of distress? It is a very bad image. Shows somebody who is insensitive to the plight of his people, of his country. Uh, it's a, a Marie Antoinette image, which is not very encouraging to anyone. He should uh, rethink his posture. Uh, the country is in uh, crisis. And the last thing he should be seen to be doing is to be enjoying himself when the rest of the population uh, is having problems just making by. So it's a very bad image for the president to be uh, portraying, not only to the people of Burundi, but to the rest of the world. Uh, just a bit earlier, we also heard the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State, Tom Malinowski, talk about um, efforts urging President Kurunziza to, to, to not stand for a third term. What more can regional leaders and the international community play in helping to resolve this crisis? I think there should be more pressure, more concerted effort. It's not an, in, an effort by one individual country, but it's a concerted regional body. Uh, making the president know that the neighbors are very concerned. For one, the outflow of refugees to them is a burden to them, and he's going to be held responsible for that. So to be turned into a pariah, a regional pariah, is not a very good thing for Burundi or for President Kruziza. He can go back to being a respectable, uh, trusted uh, leader by just returning to the principles of peace that were agreed upon in the Arusha Accord. And uh, that's all he has to do. It, uh, it's not, no, nothing else. And then uh, there should be a face saving way. The regional leaders can work out a face saving way, not that someone should be seen to lose or win, but at least return to the path of peace. And uh, he can help to do that. The regional leaders can help to do that by just reminding him them, them that he is being a bad neighbor. All right, Mashari Munene, international relations expert, thanks very much for your time today on Africa Live.